Hi there, it's Steph. Thanks for popping by. So today I'm going to show you how to create an SVG to make a origami style uh, Christmas bubble. Um, I want to make loads for my Christmas tree and I thought it'd be something fun to do with the kids because there's no way I can get them to sit down and do origami if they're too young. Um, so I've decided to do an SVG and then I can cut loads with my Cricut and then the kids can just help me fold them and then we can glue them together. So I'm going to show you how I do, well, I've been doing some thinking, I've been trying to think about different techniques. Um, I drew a, um, I did the origami for in real life on origami paper just to kind of understand the shape of it. Uh, so it's an octagon uh, and the, the folding is quite straightforward and the edges are quite straight. So that's basically the template I used. Um, and I've decided from all my experiments that this was the best one. Uh, well, the best way to proceed. So I'm first going to do a square and I'm going to do, let's do 43 by 43. Um, and I'm just going to use the select tool and I'm going to copy control C and paste control V. I want to turn, so I double click. So double click once too many times. I want to do that. I clicked once and I'm going to turn that so it's about 90 degrees. I got to eyeball it a little bit on that one. Um, but it's about right, well, you know when it's about right, and if it's not right, it's not the end of the world because it will it will look okay. The, there's so many scoring lines that are going to cross in the middle, so it will be fine. Here we go. Because there's already a node, it will automatically go onto that node that's already there, so it's so much easier than trying to do it mm, without the node, basically. So the software does quite a bit of work for me here, and that's great. <laughs> and because it's just one line uh, at the end when we have to um, modify the path. Oh, I got that one a bit far. Um, it will make it easier as well. So I'm just going to move that one because I think it's a little bit off. Oh, uh, it's not off. It's the um, curve thing. There we go. Uh, and that one a little bit as well. All right. Oh, there's one here too. Okay, so all you have to do is just make sure that the two round shape near the node are moved back onto the square so that they kind of disappear and you don't end up with a curve because you don't want the curve. So this one, yeah. So you see that round, you move it a little bit and it kind of, yeah, it joins the square, the square that represents the node. Um, okay, so that's good. I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to take the Bezier tool and I'm going to go around. So I click once and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have to make sure that at the end, you have to make sure that you click on the square for the line to be complete. Sometimes it's a bit off. You have to just change it a little bit on your own. So that doesn't look right. Uh, and that's because of this circle. So I'm taking that back into the square so that it kind of disappears. And same here. And that as well. And you can kind of see if it's not a straight line, there's a, there's a curve somewhere that you don't want. Uh, so that's going to be a cutting line, that's fine. This line here is going to be a score line. So I'm going to go to extension and I'm going to go to modify path and convert to dashes. So I'm, I've seen people use actual dashes, so they will change that full line to make it a dashed line. I don't like it because when you do that, then in Cricut, I noticed, I did it once, it did loads of dashes and it took ages because the scoring pen had to lift, then move, then dash, then lift, then move, then dash, and it takes ages. So I don't like that. I'd rather a straight scored line and I find it easier anyway. Okay. So on that next step, I'm going to try a straight line. So that's a bit longer. It takes a bit longer. Um, but if you don't do individual lines, uh, the cricket will most likely score twice on each line. So I have to do individual lines for that one. I did want to do differently, but I don't think that would work. Uh, and this one. And then we need to make some in the middle. So this one is a bit tricky. Yeah? So I'm going to try to be centered. There we go. Mm, I might have to move that one afterwards. 
Oh, I clicked one too many times. Sometimes you click too much and it restarts the... the he thinks that you want more, so it restarts. Yeah. Double click. Then about here. Double click. And I feel like I missed one. Oh, I double click too much. So here. Double click. It sounds like a lot, but the lines go far, so it's only a half, really. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to have a quick look. I'm going to zoom in ever so slightly. So this one, it's a bit off. Oh, ah, look, look what I found. It's not just off because of that, it's off because it did um, a little bit of a curve. It's a bit one as well here. So in that one, I don't feel like it's what it should be. So I'm going to try to move that one ever so slightly. Yeah, it doesn't matter if your score line goes beyond your shape as well because it's just a score line, it's not a cut line. Uh, that's a little bit better. That one could do with being a little bit more centered. So you have to kind of, you know, you zoom in and you see. But um, it will give you a bit of an idea. Here we go. I'm happy with that. That one is just a bit off. I don't know why this one is a bit off compared to everything else. I'm just going to move it a little bit. I feel like there's a... It feels like there's a curve on it. Ah, here we go. Found it. You see? So you just have to click on some of them and dip a little bit more. But this one is a bit off. Yeah, that's better. All right. So once you've done that, I've realized I haven't saved my work. So I'm going to save my work. And I've done it a few times already, so I'm going to save it on top of the previous one. That was all my practice work. Uh, and I'm going to do replays. So, now I need to get rid of my squares because I don't need them anymore. And they're just distracting me. Ah, see? So, we're going to move that one ever so slightly. Don't you like vectors? Sometimes vectors move, you don't know why as well. I mean, it's, you know, there's a bit of, because there's a bit of eyeballing, it's not a perfect, but uh, the final result, I have no doubt, would be fine. I'm gonna delete that bit, here we go. Okay, I'm happy. Ah, no, I'm not happy with that one, look at that. Let's move it a little bit. Oh, better. Ah, you see, it moved back on its own. It's fine, that will do. I'm going to move that one a little bit. So when you double click on the black line, or on the line where the vector, it will add a node, so you have to be careful. Yeah. So, here we go. Sometimes you really need to zoom in to see better, because I'm trying to do it afar. I can't zoom too far, because of the size of that window within the uh, filming software. But um, sometimes it's worth zooming in to see better. So now we've done that, I'm not going to change, so I'm trying to highlight, um, so that's the outer edge that I'm trying to highlight um, here. So this one is going to be a cut, so we're going to leave it as it is. This one I've already changed to a dash, but now I need to do all the other lines as well. So we're going to start with, let's start with this one because it means I won't forget. So extension, modify path, convert to dashes. It doesn't take that long. It, there's there's a surprisingly a lot of lines on that one. <laughs> Most of videos don't have that many lines. So now I will save it, Control S, and I'm going to close that. Um, here we go. So we're now in Cricut. So I'm going to start a new project. My mouse. Sorry, you can't see my mouse, but it's here on the left hand side. Oh, yeah, left hand side on new project. Um, and the steps we are going to follow now. If you save your project, you only have to do it once. Uh, every time you reload your project, you'll have to rechange the line. But I will explain in a minute. So we got a new page. I'm gonna go to upload and upload image. So that's my previous attempts. They did work, 
but I was looking for the fastest way possible, which is not as fast as I wish it was, but I tried to find the, the most straightforward way, which I hope it is, <laughs> uh, to try to save you some time if you decide to try to give that a go. So we're going to do that one. open so because it's an SVG file it automatically recognizes it as you know a cut file so click upload it's not like when you upload a PNG it will not detect it like it will detect the edge but sometimes it's not accurate that's why I like the SVG so much so then you click on your upload and you click on add to canvas uh, I try I st when I started using Cricut uh, I used PNG well PNGs uh, and it worked, but it was never great, uh, and I much prefer um, SVGs. So I'm going to change the color on that because I find it a little bit hard to look at. And it's a bit small, uh, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So, here we are. So all my score lines are showing as basic cuts, and that's just how it is. I looked around on the internet and I can't seem to find a solution to to save it. Maybe there's someone who can program things in things, but I'm not at that stage yet. So that's the that's the way for people who don't know how to do too much techy things. So we have two big shapes here. Uh, that's my outline. So my overall outside shape. So, you know, um, that's my outline. Uh, and I'm going to keep that one. So I'm not going to touch that. However, that's not a cut. That's a score line. So I'm going to select this one. And all the other score lines that we want to change to score. What I want to highlight is here, this turned out to be one shape. If we'd done just individual tiny lines around, we would probably have had 16 or 18 more to select here. So it would have taken a lot longer. So by making it just in one line all the way around the shape, we saved quite a lot of time. So I'm select all of these and I'm going to go in operation. I'm going to change it from cut to score and then you have to attach everything because if you don't actually that one should be higher on the... I don't know if I can move it I'm going to ungroup it can I move it higher is that relevant Ah, yeah, here you go. So now you can see that star shape because before you came up at the last layer on the top of the on the layer list. Actually, should I move my photo? Sorry. That probably will make more sense. Apologies. So this, well, you can't really see it on the screen, but uh, this shape here was at the very bottom of that list. So you couldn't see it because technically it was hidden behind that layer. So I moved it up here on the list, so it's not hidden behind the orange layer anymore. So now we have everything. I hope it all makes sense. If it doesn't, please let me know. Uh, we're going to group everything. And we are, we are going to change the size because for some reason, the size is not where it should be. So we're going to do 13 by 13. Do you remember I said earlier I was talking about proportions? And everything will be okay as long as the proportions are good. So that would be fine, 13 by 13. Now I'm going to click on that. Uh, oh, I forgot to, to attach. So you have to attach it because if you don't attach it, that's what's going to happen. You'll see in a minute. You have loads of lines. <laughs> that's not going to give you a train. So do not forget to attach it because if you do, that's what you'll get. So in order to attach it, simple as well. You select the whole thing. And you just click attach at the bottom. I know some people flatten. I still haven't gotten around to flattening things. Um, and then you click make it. Hey so. there, it's Dev. A few days later, um, I've hurt my back. So I had to leave all my things and wasn't able to finish uh, what I started. But I'm back. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you about something. Um, if you look at the photo, uh, I have changed a little bit the pointy bit of the star, you know, the inner corner of the star, because I found that they were a bit too narrow. Um, so although we did use the two squares to kind of get that shape, uh, I then went back in and I just pulled the vector inward a little bit. It doesn't take that long. Uh, again, it's eyeballed, but it, it kind of 
you know it gives a little bit more space for the fold so now i'm gonna i printed it and cut a few uh, I'm going to show you how I put it together, so I will speed it up because it's, it's a bit fiddly and it takes time um, but it will give you an idea of how I do it. Uh, I have tried with different types of glue and so far uh, the glue gun, getting the big guns out, uh, is the one that worked the best for me. So I'm going to film that and show how I did it. And the folding is perfectly fine. Uh, the gluing is a challenging part. And if people say it's only worth it if it's hard, uh, well, it's definitely worth it because it's really hard to put together. So I genuinely think that if I did that with um, some more flexible paper that doesn't, the prime of this thick paper, the reason I'm showing you because it looks horrible and I wasted free and I'm a bit frustrated. But the reason I'm showing you is because it's not to do with the SVG file, it's to do with the cardstock. The cardstock springs back, uh, you know, you squish it and it springs back open. So every time you put the glue, it springs back. So I think it's definitely worth giving it a try with a paper that's a bit thinner. Uh, for my part, I will not try with thinner paper because my color scheme is that this year, that and green and a bunch of cardstock and pattern that I bought from the works in the UK. Um, so yeah, but I think it would definitely work with thinner paper. I mean, I did get that one to stick, but I first glued a corner with some PVA glue and then a second one. And then I tried with foam tape and it didn't work great. And then I did with the glue gun and then that worked. And for some reason tonight I can't get it to work. So, you know, it's, we learned from experience and I'm sharing with you what I've learned is that I do think it's great for thick cardstock. Uh, but I have another shape of bubble that I made with thick cardstock that actually did work uh, and I will film a video and show you that later. So thanks for watching. I hope you found the uh, Inkscape uh, SVG part interesting. If you have any questions, please let me know and hopefully I'll get a few more videos uh, going in a few weeks, maybe after Christmas because it's going to be quite busy. Uh, and if I don't have any video before then, have a lovely Christmas. Bye! All right, that's kind of like your after credit, after the credit. I did manage to save two of them. I went back to the glue gun because I couldn't go to bed on an argument with my cardstock. And I managed to save two out of three. And they're not the prettiest, but I will put them at the bottom of the tree. And at least they're not wasted. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.